I just got back from watching The Crow remake and it was a fucking disaster. This movie is the definition of why certain movies should not be remade, especially if they're considered cult classics. Sure, you won't hear people praise the original Crow movie like the original Robocop or Terminator or Predator or Alien films, but The Crow is still a cult classic. And then the original came out around a time when comic movies were sort of getting their foot together. But then a couple years later, it went down the drain until Blade happened. But it still came out, the original still came out around a good time. And 30 years later, they decide to make a reboot. And it might be the worst Crow movie, which, not surprising to be honest. A lot of people say Wicked Prayer, which is the one with John Connor, and the fourth film. Everyone says that was the worst one, but I haven't seen it in years. I haven't seen any of the sequels in years. In fact, I've only rewatched the sequels. Well, actually, I never rewatched the sequels. I've only seen the sequels one time, and that was when I was binge watching all the Crow movies. The original is the only one I go back and rewatch, and the only one I own on DVD. Heck, that Crow live-action TV series, The Stairway to Heaven, I think that looks better than this movie. This remake is on par with the 2019 Hellboy remake, meaning that it's one of the worst comic movies ever made. Well, I will say this remake is a bit better than the Hellboy remake because the Hellboy remake was so fucking boring. Like, I remember how I nearly fell asleep when watching the Hellboy remake. Like, I never fall asleep when watching a movie. Even if it's fucking shit. The chemistry between Shelly and Eric in this movie is not very good. And they focus on their chemistry within the first act. Yeah, the first act in this movie is pretty boring. Like, when you're watching the movie at first, and, you know, when they're, oh, a montage of Eric and Shelly being so cute together, like a happy couple, you're just thinking, okay, when the fuck are they going to die? Like, that's what I was saying to myself when I was in the theater. I'm like thinking, when is the crow shit going to happen? And that doesn't happen until the very end of the movie. Like, he doesn't become the fucking crow until the end. Sure, he, like, you know, dies and gets resurrected, but he doesn't fully become the crow until around the very end of the movie. So throughout the movie, he's just Eric Draven and not the crow. You like, what amazes me is that they focus on the chemistry way too much to where you really just don't care. And I think it's because how bad the acting is in this movie. The acting in this movie is terrible. Even from Bill Skarsgar, I'm, I think I butchered his last name, but I'm sorry, Bill. Like, he's a great actor. He played fucking Pennywise in It Chapter 1 and 2. Like, he was great as Pennywise. But here, it's like, he has a New Yorker accent, and it just doesn't feel very convincing. And the actress playing Shelley, and I didn't really like her performance. She didn't do a very good job. The old guy, when Eric is sent to this place with a bunch of crows around, which is sort of like some sort of afterlife or resurrection or whatever. I don't know. It's not fucking explained at all. It's just, oh, he's happened to be here. And when Shelly and Eric die, like, the people who murder them just happen to know where they were when they happen. It's like, how'd you get their location? Like, how'd you figure out where they lived or where they're hiding at? Like, how'd you know about that? And apparently where they're murdered is Eric's place, yet it seems to be at the beginning he was locked into a mental institute for his whole life since he was a little kid because later in the film, when the villain is, like, showing him flashbacks or whatever for hate or whatever. Like, it's shown that he burned down his house and his dying mother. So it's hinted that he might have killed his mother. So that would explain why he's been a mental institution for nearly his whole life. And then he meets Shelly and they decide to escape. So how the fuck does Eric get access to his safe house? And the thing is, for, like, the romantic stuff, like... It's written as if they only knew each other for a few days and not even a week or a month. But we get some flashbacks. We get a flashback after they die to a scene we didn't see yet. So it's hinted that they've been together for quite some time now. But again, the movie, it feels more like they've only just knew each other. We didn't really get a lot of good chemistry with them other than them just hooking up. Like We got a lot more of that. Like The only real scene we kind of got in is... When they're hanging out with a bunch of people who I guess is their friends and she's reading the book. And the scene in the bathtub when they're high. That's really it. And maybe a few other scenes. But other than that, it's not written very well. 
And I think it might be because the dialogue and the acting is just not very good. Like, in the original, we didn't probably get as much screen time with Eric and Shelly in the original. But, like, it was written way better. Like, you knew how much they loved each other. And you felt so sad that Eric lost the woman of his life. Here, it's like, you really don't give a shit because it's not written very well. Sometimes less is more. And I know it's, un it's understandable if you wanted to, it to be a bit longer for more character development and why it'd be more sadder. I understand why they did that, but it just got to a point where it felt so boring. It's like, we really didn't need any of this. Like the, like the whole first act being with, oh, Eric and Shelly are so happy together. Like, just so a few scenes, like a few flashbacks of them being happy together like in the original. Like, we don't need to show us, you don't need the first act to be just, oh, look how happy they are. Show a few flashbacks of them being happy together, and bam, we feel bad. Don't, like, rely on the whole first act about them. Like, if this was a different crow, like, if this wasn't Eric Draven, like, instead this was just some original character, then this would be more understandable. But the fact that it's not, heck, even the sequels, they don't focus on, like, the relationship way too much. We get flashbacks of how they feel, of how... You know, the crow in each movie feels about their loved one being killed. Like, we get flashbacks of them having a good time together. Here, it's just, they just focus on it way too long for the first act. And yes, I've said the acting is terrible, and so is the soundtrack. Like, for the music, for the music choices in this film, I'm like thinking, wow, this soundtrack does not fit the tone of this movie. Because when you think of a tone for the crow, you think it would be dark and depressing. And if it was going to be happy music, it would be a bit more you know, still sad at the end, like, you know, like, like if they were going to have a soundtrack, a happy soundtrack for these two, they should have it be in a way where, like, it's sad, but also romantic, because you know what's going to happen to these two in the end, or one of them at least, but, like, they have music choices that wouldn't fit the tone of the crow at all. The only time the soundtrack was good is when, you know, he's putting on black eye makeup, or... When, after the opera scene where he has the flowers and he puts it on the bridge. Like, those are the only two good soundtracks of this movie. Everything else sucked. The Crow design is clearly bad. I mean, it's literally just the Jared Leto design all over again. Like, he's got the fucking tattoos. Like, it's just terrible. He looks like Florida Joker. Like, this is not the Crow. This looks like a guy who thinks he's cool and edgy. The main villain of this movie is the guy who played Colonel Stryker in X-Men Origins Wolverine. And he was also the side villain in Wonder Woman 1. Unfortunately, of these three comic book movies, he's only appeared in one good one, and that was the first Wonder Woman film. He's appeared in X-Men Origins Wolverine, like I said, and that was a bad movie. And this might be the worst comic book film he's appeared in so far. He's only appeared in one good comic book movie so far. I literally forgot the main villain's name in this movie, but pretty much he has this power where he whispers in people's ears and convinces them to kill themselves or kill someone else. So we find out that the reason these people are after Shelly and her friends is her one of her male friends was filming this video for a fun time, and the video caught the main villain whispering to Shelly, and he made he might control or brainwash Shelly into killing her friend. And pretty much he's the main villain's trying to get rid of this video, and this is what gets Shelly, Eric, and Shelly's friend Sadie killed. And the main reason why Eric and Shelly escaped from the mental institution or prison or whatever is because she, th she recognizes them and she told Eric and they have to get out of here. Also, for some reason, the prison uniforms are pink and not orange or any color that, you know, is a prison uniform, mainly orange or gray. I don't get why they made it pink. I don't, I'm guessing the pink is supposed to represent love since that is a color of love, but I just find it weird. If the main reason for pink uniforms for this prison is, oh, it's supposed to be a cinematography kind of message, like represent love, I mean, it's kind of clever, but it doesn't really make sense. Like, why is it pink? I just find it weird. Also, one thing I noticed with the main villain is he has this little girl around with him who plays the piano. And it seems like he has a little bit of sexual intentions with her. And it's just gross. And, but I want to talk about the girl real quick. Because it seems like she had a bit of an important role. 
But, like, around the third act, she's just completely written out of the film. It's like, what the fuck happened to her? Like, I remember going on my way home from the theater. I'm, like, thinking, oh, yeah, what happened to that girl who was, like, near the main villain, you know, who was playing the piano? Like, what happened to her? It's like she was completely forgotten. I feel like she had a scene in the third act but was cut. I feel like she was cut. I wouldn't be surprised if later in the year or somewhere months or years after this movie came out, we're probably going to get some all deleted scenes or things that were cut from this movie. Like, who knows? Maybe this whole movie is going to have its own Snyder cut. So now I'm going to talk about the one scene that really made me hate this movie and just straight up pissed me off. And it's when Eric goes back to the apartment that, you know, Shelly's friend was renting and he sees her, She find, and he finds her phone and he sees the video. So after he found out why, you know, she was acting strange and why these people were after her and got her and himself killed, instead of going to the police and showing them that this happened, of course, the police might not believe him, but they might take into, a, you know, investigation in it if, you know, he's being legit about it. But instead of doing any of that, like, bring it to the police and arresting the guy, instead he shows his friend the video and what's going on, and the criminals somehow find out his location, and Eric gets his friend fucking killed. This is blank character assassination. Like, Eric literally, like, this is just character assassination. They just fucking butchered Eric Draven. And I don't want to hear an excuse like, oh, but like, uh, Eric didn't know if the, these people were going to come and get him and his friend killed. Well, here's the thing. When he got, when him and Shelly got killed, they just randomly showed up. So if he's aware something like this could happen again, it's best to bring it to the police. Sure, something might similar ha might happen, but you know, at least there's a group of cops to help you out or stop these guys trying to kill you and taking the video to delete it, like, show the video to the police and get the main villain arrested. Even if they might think, oh, it's not real, it's fake. Like, they should still keep it for investigation if you're trying to convince them that it's real. But nah, that would be the smart thing. Instead, you decide to show your best friend and then you get him killed. And literally, after you get resurrected again, after you told this old guy who's acting is not very good as well, who seems to be some sort of resurrection devil or whatever. I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be that dead cowboy that was cut from the original and the dead cowboy in the comic. But he doesn't look like that whatsoever. He looks like a normal guy. But anyway, Eric says, oh, I offer you my soul to bring her back. So it's sort of like some sad, depressing ending for love. Like, yeah, that's a good sign and all, but I'll get to the ending later. But anyway... So after Eric reawakens and fully becomes the crow, so instead of, like, you know, immediately getting ready to become the full crow, literally after he killed all the guys who killed his friend, he literally decides to smoke some weed next to the body of his dead friend. It's like, really, dude? Like, after you kill all these guys to avenge your friend's death, you decide to just s s smoke a lot of latte or whatever? Like, really, dude? Like, your best friend just died... And you're chilling next to his corpse, smoking weed, or whatever. Like, that's just disrespectful. Like, that dude helped you get your tattoos. And it seems to be like he was written as your closest, if not only, friend. So, like, the fact that you got him killed, and he don't really seem to be all upset afterwards, just blatantly ruins Eric Draven's character in this movie. And he didn't even become the fucking crow yet. Like, he didn't put on the fucking makeup yet until like after this scene so by the time he's fully the crow his character's already ruined oh <sighs> but now let's talk about some of the things i liked the one thing i liked in this movie was the opera scene i love the cinematography and the opera scene i like the opera scene you know the opera singing and you know the crow is just or eric is just masquerading all the bad guys like i like that scene i like how gory it was I felt like that was a good scene. In fact, that might be the, really the only good scene in the movie, in my personal opinion. I also like the soundtrack after the opera scene, where he's having the flowers and he delivers it to the bridge. Because, you know, they were, you know, he promised Shelly, like, you know, oh, if she jumped off the bridge, that he would jump off the bridge with her. 
And I somewhat liked the ending. I felt like it was heartwarming. But at the same time, I don't like these versions of these characters. But yeah, that's pretty much all I liked. So now let's get to the pressing ending. So, you know, in the end, Eric brings the main villain to the world where he was sort of resurrected. And kills the main villain there. And he brings back Shelly. And Shelly is resurrected. And Eric is left into the deceased or whatever world he's stuck in. So the film ends with Shelly being brought back to life. And Eric being dead forever. And pretty much he's left in the crow world. As I'm going to call it now. Yeah, quite a not so happy ending. But... I get what they're going for. It's love that he will do anything to bring back the one he loves. But I personally would prefer what they did with the original and, in fact, all the other Crow movies and the comics is at there he killed everyone who murdered his loved one. He reunites with the one he loves the most. Sort of a happy ending. But here... This is the only Crow movie that has no happy ending and says more of a sad ending. How he's never going to reunite with the one he loves. And I would love a story. I would love, I love some endings like this, but like the ending just doesn't feel satisfying. Like I like how it was. It was sad, but I have to remember that this is the same guy who got his best friend killed and decided to smoke some weed right after he murdered the people who killed his best friend. And his friend's dead body's right next to him. So yeah, this guy's a prick. And that was my review of The Crow remake. And it's a fucking disaster of a film. And it feels like an insult to Brandon Lee's legacy and the film he died for. Heck, it even feels insulting towards the sequels. And the sequels aren't even that great. Like, this might be the worst adaption of The Crow I've ever seen. And it's supposed to be a reboot of the original. Like, do not watch this movie. Just go watch the original. Like, I'm probably going to rewatch the original much later. Like, maybe tomorrow because it's pretty late where I'm at right now. But I'm probably going to rewatch the original around tomorrow or some other time. Just so I can get my memory straight on how great the original was. And what this remake did wrong. But, like, I don't think you have to rewatch the original to know what this remake got wrong. <sighs> I'm going to get some water real quick. Excuse me, I'm leaving that in just so you know my suffering and my voice and how I sounded when I was editing and talking. But yeah, my conclusion, I'm going to give The Crow remake a 1 out of 10. I was going to be nice and give it a 2, but the more I thought about it, it's a fucking 1 out of 10. This is one of the worst comic movies I've ever seen in a long time. Actually, no, that's not the case. The Flash came out last year and that was awful. So I say this movie is just as bad, but... Maybe not as bad as the Flash movie. I would say this movie is just as bad as the Hellboy remake the more I think about it. Like, earlier I said, oh, it's not as bad. But, like, while the Hellboy remake is boring, the first act of this movie is pretty bland and boring. But, like, this movie's not as boring. But it's still a disaster, and I will never watch this movie again. So, yeah, 1 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time when I review either Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, or Iron Man, Hulk, Heroes United.